Hello, this is Carlos Gomez and Jeremy Yahoo Weeps and Hello and Shalom. We're going to discuss a few scriptures that would uh, uh, make some people believe that uh, the Bible is talking about reincarnation. So I give you the floor, my friend. Okay, well, um, the, the few verses that I uh, know of that are referenced, there's uh, Yohanan or John chapter 9, verse 1. And um, I'm going to, actually, I should have pulled it up already. I don't have it pulled up right now. But I'm in the process of pulling it up. So if you give me a moment, I will get that pulled up and uh, reference it. John chapter 9. Verse 1 says this. Now, as Yoshua was passing by, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. His Talmudim, or um, what's called disi uh, disciples or students, asked him, Rabbi, which means uh, my teacher, who committed the sin that caused him to be born blind, this man or his parents? Yoshua answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but he was born blind so that the acts or works of Yiwei of Elohim may be revealed through what happens to him. Um, and just as a side note, that that uh, when I said Yiwei of Elohim in the Greek, I think it's Theos commonly gets translated in, into God, but I think there's evidence that uh, it's previously translated either from Yiwei, uh, which means the self-existent one, or Elohim, which means the ultimate powerful authority. Right. Uh, you uh, are reading uh, John what? Uh, chapter 9, verse uh, 1 through 3. Okay, thank you. Huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, you care if I keep on commenting? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, so the theory is that um, who committed the sin for him to be born blind, this man or his parents? Well, if it was this man that committed the sin, why would the disciples be asking if he committed the sin to cause him to be born blind unless he had sinned previously to being born, and that's why he was born blind. But Yeshua um, dispels the concept when he starts saying, neither the man sinned, man nor his parents sinned. Neither, neither of those things were the cause of him being born blind. He was born blind so that things about Yiwei could be revealed to people. Things about Yiwe will be revealed to people by what Yiwe does with the man who's born blind. So it's not it's not a matter of it being the man the man's fault or his parents' fault for him being born blind. It's all for the purpose of truths about Yiwe, our Creator, being revealed to us through Him. And, and I see that that's the way it is through all of us. It's not a matter of. Um, it being um, like your fault that you are born into a sinful world and, and into a state that you um, commit sin, um, whether you choose to or not. Um, but you're not, you don't have any choice in whether or not you choose to be sinful. Whether or not you, you have to have the choice of being sinful. Right. And, and whether Yiwei determines for you to commit sin whenever you do commit sin. And, You're not given... Oh, go ahead. And, uh, and sin is not the cause of the deformalities in, uh, in people or, yeah, in, in I was going to say uh, animals, but animals can't... Uh, are not subject to sin. So, uh, uh, so just uh, 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 humans. It's not sin that causes the abnormalities of being blind or being born with extra limbs or with no limbs. That's just that the way that the Creator purposed those individuals to be born so that we can see His awesomeness when He heals them and makes them complete. Sometime, yes. Sometime in the future, or or maybe even now. I, or even um, if the if he doesn't heal them, even if he doesn't heal them, sometimes you can see wonderful beauty in a person who 
Yes. It, you know, either they're born with Down syndrome or they're, they're missing limbs or they're born blind or whatever the case may be. Um, you can see wonderfulness of the Creator through that person. I think a a great example, and I hope I don't embarrass you, but I, 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 a great example is 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 you with with your ill, Ill, illness. If you didn't have your illness, you'd be out in the world, or who knows what you'd be doing. And but instead, because of where the Creator has you, you are such a great benefit to me and and to others because of because of the knowledge and wisdom that that the Creator has is has and is giving you. And I really value your friendship and your intellect because if it wasn't for for your illness, we would not know what we're talking about. Or maybe we would, but uh, but uh, I I think what 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 I want to say is that your your illness is a blessing for many, and I know that it's uh, literally not uh, a blessing to you physically, mentally, emotionally because of the things that you're going through, but. You are literally a blessing for many, and and I would have to attribute that it's because of your illness, and that's how the Creator is is showing His awesomeness through your awesomeness. Period. <laughs> oh my gosh, my friend! Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. All, all praise to Yah. I mean, but it's it's. I mean, I, I so much appreciate that, but but I see it with you and and with everybody else too because we all have our our burdens and our our difficulties that we have, right? Right. But the Creator shines through. I mean, He definitely shines through you. To me, that's so evident. But I I, I see that He shines through through everyone in, in His ways. Um, so I mean, I'm not trying to d diminish your high compliment because that was a very um, very appreciated, very high compliment. I, I just want you to know that it's very reciprocated in that I see that he's doing wonderfulness through you, and I, I see that he shines through you. But I, 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 you. I see that um, that everyone has, in, 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 um, because everybody has their weaknesses and their frailties and their burdens, right? Right. But he shines, he shines through each person in, in his own special way that's unique to that person particular person which is just awesome and beautiful to behold but yeah that's true um so uh, uh -huh. so so he's the potter and so he has the right over his his creation his his vessels to to make them however he so desires right exactly exactly and 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 no no pot that he makes can be discounted by any of the other pots I because know. none of us are in a position to discount any other pot. Right. So, th so the only one that could possibly be in the position to discount the pot is the Creator Himself, and the Creator says that um, His prized possession pot, Yoshua, He sent to redeem the rest of the pots and and show the rest of us um, the way to be. And that even if, even when we get broken, because we'll all get broken, but even when that happens doesn't mean there's no hope. It's just part of the process of um, his redemption that will bring us to a place of um, not only satisfaction, but good like nobody has ever dreamed of before. Right. So, so uh, if if you don't mind me going on with the uh, yeah, what's the with the other scriptures or something? Yeah. Um, so that's what I see. Uh, that's why I see that it's it's a, a misunderstanding of of these verses. That it's not really about um, the possibility of the man uh, sinning before birth, but it's more about the Creator revealing things about Himself through what the man has gone through. 
through him being born blind and through any of us with, with whatever condition we have, um, whether it's a health condition or, a, you know, some other life condition, it's all for the glory of Yiwei. Um, so that's, that's, uh, Yohanan 9 or John 9 verse 1. And then in a Matic Yahoo or Matthew chapter 11 verse 13 to 14, um, it says, because all the Nebaim, and that Nebaim means uh, ones who pour forth, and it's commonly translated prophets, it's, it's ones who pour forth the messages of Yue. Um, because all the Nebaim and the Torah, and the Torah commonly gets translated law, but it actually means instructions. And it's talking about the instructions that Yahweh gives on how to live and how to be. Um, all the uh, Nebaim and Torah have prophesied, or, or poured forth, the message of Yue until Yohanan, or John. And if you are willing to receive it, he is Eliyahu, or Elijah, who was to come. Um, that's Matthew, Yahu, or Matthew 11, verses 13 to 14. Um, and then again it says in Matthew, Yahu 17, 10 through 13, or Matthew, it says, And the Talmudim, or disciples or students, asked him, saying, What then do the scribes say that Eliyahu, or Elijah, must come first? But he answered them and said, Eliyahu, or Elijah, indeed is to come and will restore all things. But I say to you that Eliyahu has come already, and they didn't know him, but did to him whatever they wanted. So also um, the son of Adam, or son of man, suffers at their hand. Then the Talmudim understood that he had spoken of Yohanan the Immerser. And they say that, um, like in... in uh, this article is saying that it, um, that Eliyahu or Elijah was actually reincarnated as Yohanan the Immerser, John the Baptist. But if you look at um, oh, let me find it. Luke chapter one verses. Um, I'll start in verse 13. Okay. But the messenger said to him, and that messenger gets commonly gets translated into angel, Don't be afraid, Zechariah, because your prayer has been heard, and your wife, Elisheba, or commonly translated into Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you will name him Yohanan. Commonly translated as John, but that actually means Yah is compassionate, or Yahweh is compassionate. Joy and gladness will come to you, and many will rejoice at his birth, because he will be great in the sight of Yahweh. He must never drink wine or strong drink, and he will be filled with the Ruach HaKodesh, which actually means um, the separate breath, um, but commonly gets translated into the Holy Spirit. Even before his birth, he will turn many of the people of Yisrael to Yahweh, their Elohim, and Yahweh means uh, the self-existent one, um, Yisrael means, if I remember right, it means he turns the head of El, and basically meaning he gets El's attention. And um, Elohim means, um, either means powerful authorities or very powerful authority, and in the case of Yiwei, it's ultimate powerful authority. And he will go as forerunner before Yiwei in the spirit and power of Eliyahu to turn the hearts of the fathers back to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready for Yiwei a people prepared for him. So right there, it's illustrating that the way in which Yohanan is Eliyahu, is it's in the spirit and power of Eliyahu. It's not saying that he's actually the same person. It's saying that he's in the same spirit and power. He's in the same mind, um, the same um, essence and power of Eliyahu. So he's he's filling the same function that Eliyahu filled with individuality, also. Right. right. Yeah. It's not it's not saying that he's an identical same person. No. Um, it's saying that he's he's filling the same function. Right. He's doing the same thing that Eliyahu did, even though they're not the same person, even though they have their own, each of them have their own personality and their own way of doing things. Right. They're still filling that same function. I I think uh, another good an analogy maybe is uh, a scripture that says uh, 
let the mind of Christ be in every one of you? Uh, does that mean that that then we all are reincarnated to, and we're all uh, 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 Christ? We're all uh, <laughs> Yahshua's? Uh, right. Yeah. And no, we're just uh, in in the mindset in in the character of, right. of the Messiah. We haven't become him. Right. It's not saying that you don't have your own mind anymore and now you the mind of Christ is in you so that you know, you don't have your own thoughts anymore. Right. Yeah, we still have our own thoughts just as right. uh, John the Baptist did. Right, right. It's that you're in exactly like you said, it's that you're that you're in that mindset now. Very good. Then they um this this article also says in Malachi or Malachi chapter four verse five, um, look, I will send you Eliyahu the Nabi before the coming of the great and dreadful day of Yahweh, um, which of course is referring to Yohanan the Immerser, but it's not saying that I'm going to reincarnate Eliyahu or I'm not going to raise Eliyahu from the dead and send him to you. It's saying that the same function, the, uh, someone with the same function and the same position that Eliyahu was in is going to come to you. Uh-huh. Yes. Um, oh, go ahead, what? Is there more? Um, yeah, there's, well, there's, I don't think there's more, uh, verses that are used. Okay. Um, to illustrate, I, I'm looking really quick. Um. Yeah, because while you're looking, I'll say something. I, I okay. think that, uh, that re reincarnation, uh, just uh, makes the creator look like he's weak and he's made a, a mistake that he would have to uh, bring a a person back to life as another person and to continue to to suffer and to endure in the in in the process of being uh, reincarnated, coming back over and over until he finally uh, achieves uh, uh, the ultimate goal of being uh, as equal to God as possible. Uh, I don't know that much about reincarnation, but I think the 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 purpose of a reincarnation is to to finally come back as a being or as a deity that is as close to if not uh, in the likeness of of uh, the ultimate uh, authority uh, if that's what uh, the, the reincarnation process is then the creator is is torturing Humanity by continuing to to bring them back through this process, and they are it makes uh, the the creator look like like a mad god, like a mad scientist to a and certain degree. Actually, kind of cruel and sadistic to just you've suffered through this life once, and now you have to do it again. Yeah, and again and again, however many times you know. Mm -hmm. But um, it made me think of how. The um, this universe is almost like the creator's womb. Um, not literally, of course, but but figuratively, it's like the creator's womb. And um, the the term, what you know, how people talk about being born again. Yeah. The term that's used for for being born in uh, the Brit Hadashah New Testament mm -hmm. is um, a word that actually covers the whole transition from conception to birth. So when it says, um, Yoshua says, you must be born again, it's not necessarily saying you must be born again. It could be saying you must be conceived again. But since we're born again at when we get resurrected, that that's when we have our new birth. We're born from this life into the next one. That it would make sense that he's talking about that you must be conceived again. And... Um, so people get conceived again 
into Yiwe in this life, and then born into Yiwe, Yiwe's family in the next life. But if you were going to say that reincarnation happened, then there would be multiple gestation periods for each person. Oh, yeah. That they would be in the womb of the universe, not only once, but again and again and again. But that is contrary to this, um, the living symbolism that Yue gave us of birth itself, that when a child is conceived, they go through a period of time in the mother's womb, and then at the end of that period, they're born. Just like we go through this period of time in this universe that we've been conceived in Yue, um, and that the womb of the universe, and then at the end of the time that we're in this gestation period of being in this universe, we're born into Yiwei's reality. That was well said. Thank you very much, my friend. You're welcome. But but I, uh, a couple other verses I wanted to note yeah. is that in, in Job or Job chapter 14, um, verse 14, it says, If a man dies, will he live again? All the days of my hard service, I will wait until my release comes. Um, but the an I think the answer to, re to be found to his rhetorical question, because he asked if a man dies, will he live again? I think the answer is found two verses earlier, um, where it says in verse 12, it says, So man lies down and does not rise. Until the heavens are no more, they will not awake, nor rise from their sleep. And he's, t he's talking, of course, about death. Yeah, so, so that there should be sufficient to throw the, the, the concept of the previous scriptures uh, that they are describing reincarnation. Right, and then in Coelet or Ecclesiastes chapter 9, in verse 4 through 6, it says this, um, but whoever is among the living has hope. A live dog is better than a dead lion, because the living know that they will die, but the dead don't know anything. They have no further reward, and even the memory of them disappears. What they loved as well as what they hated and envied perished long ago, and they no longer have a part in anything that happens on earth. Oh, that's interesting. So right there, it's saying that that the dead don't know anything. And then it says, um, in chapter, chapter 9, verse 9, it says, Enjoy life with your beloved wife during all the days of your fleeting life that Yah has given you on earth during all your fleeting days, because that is your reward in life and your burdensome work on earth. Whatever you find to do with your hands, do it with all your might, because there is neither work nor planning, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, the place where you will eventually go. And then also, uh, also if we are reincarnated o over and over again, then on, on Judgment Day, since we have been s so many different individuals, how is the Creator going to judge us? Uh, let's see, you were... Joe Smith in 1864, then you were uh, Mary Jones in 1920, and uh, then so and so and so on. So how will he, uh, how will the Creator judge each individual that has been one individual in many, if that makes sense or not? <laughs> oh, I, th I think it makes sense. I mean, I think that somebody could try to find an answer to it, but I think that since scripture over and over and over again, it refers to death as sleep. Yeah. It refers to um, that what's actually happening when you're dead, that you don't know anything and you don't do anything, that, that that's just, um, it's just not possible. That scripture um, repeatedly states that death means being asleep with no thought and no activity and no knowledge. Very good. Yep, you're not even passing gas. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's it? I, I think so. I mean, that's... 
that's what I found with it. I mean, I know there's a lot of other uh, verses that reference um, death is sleep, and there's some verses that uh, reference how the judgment that's talking about in Ibrahim or Hebrews, um, when it says that it, it's appointed for people to die once and after that to face judgment. Right. Um, that judgment that's being talked about over and over again, it's referenced as being judged at the end of this age, the end of this reality, that that's when the judgment happens. So that right. you die and you sleep in death, and then you awake to judgment, which is basically you a deciding what to do with you to bring you to a right. good, upright, right. pleasant existence. Right. So that's what judgment's all about. So you so. can't believe in dying and then resurrecting and and then standing in judgment if you believe in reincarnation because reincarnation is the opposite of of what i just stated it re reincarnation takes you through several and several and several it it could be five ten twenty hundred times being born over again exactly exactly well very interesting yep well, I hope this uh, will help uh, you understand uh, the concept of the scriptures that that make people think in reincarnation, but in reality, there is no reincarnation. We we are born, we live our life on the earth in the vaccinated time that the Creator has given us and we die, we sleep and then we are resurrected and uh, judged well, much better existence yes, much better well, uh, thank you my friend and I will stop this recording here thank you my friend, Shalom Shalom